Good afternoon, everyone. This is Chase Caldwell, and today I'm going to talk with you about asthma. So a little introduction. What is asthma? Asthma is a condition in which a person's airways become inflamed, narrow and swell, and produce extra mucus. Due to the narrowing, swelling, and production of extra mucus, it makes it more difficult to breathe and can trigger coughing, wheezing, and shortness of breath. Asthma is also known as bronchial asthma, or if it is brought on by exercise, it's known as exercise-induced bronchospasms or exercise-induced asthma. The epidemiology of asthma. The recent increase in reported prevalence of asthma worldwide has led to a magnitude of studies being conducted for its prevalence and characteristics of this condition. The International Study of Asthma and Allergies in, Ch in Childhood found that during a mean of seven years following the study's initial phase, most countries who participated, the prevalence of asthma was actually stable or even decreased, but in other areas increased, especially in children ages 13 to 14 years old. The lower rates were found in most Asian countries, while the higher rates were found in the UK, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Risk factors of asthma uh, include family history. So if you have parents who are asthmatics, you're more li most likely uh, to either become asthmatic than someone who has parents that are not asthmatics. Uh, sensitivity to environmental factors would include air pollution, uh, allergens, which is dust, mold, uh, dander, and pollen toxic chemicals and exposure to secondhand smoke or even tobacco usage um, and obesity. Common medications for this condition are they're divided by two. You are they're either going to take long-term medications or quick quick relief. Um, Long-term are normally taken to control the chronic symptoms and prevent attacks, while quick relief are taken as needed for rapid short-term relief, with the most common being albuterol. The effects of asthma in exercise. So first we got aerobic training. So there was a pilot study conducted to determine if there was a correlation between active play exercise in childhood and asthma. Uh, the participants were six students who were assessed by their anthropometrics, lung function, cardiorespiratory fitness, and physical activity. The study was six weeks long and included of three sessions, a warm-up, the main, and a cool-down, while the warm-up focused more on ball games, games of tag, kind of warm up the body while the main session was more endurance games and the cool down session was more low intensity games and included a little bit of music to help calm them down. The findings of this pilot study was that children experienced some degree of impairment ranging from a little bothered to not bothered at all. Another study was conducted and compared 64 healthy participants to 44 asthmatics and found that the asthmatic participants had a maximum heart rate similar to that of healthy participants, but they also had a low VO2 max, anaerobic threshold, and oxygen pulse. But they think that it was more because of their lack of physical activity. Next we have anaerobic training. In a six-week randomized controlled trial, 16 boys with mild to moderate asthma participated in a rehab program with individualized training on a cycle ergometer. Um, they measured the changes in VO2 max, map, map short-term peak power, and pulmonary function. Also, the it was consists of one minute sprints against maximal aerobic power every four minutes and the session duration was 45 minutes long with three sessions per week. The findings were that the exercise training with high intensity bouts was very well tolerated in children with mild to moderate asthma. 
both aerobic and aerobic fitness were improved by this training program and should be considered in sports rehab programs for children with asthma. Next we have flexibility training. So a study was conducted on 10 participants with an average age of 23 years old. The treatments were one hour sessions consisting of eccentric stretching of the arm, shoulder, and chest while lying in a supine position. The findings were that there was an improvement observed for the mean asthma control questionnaire scores from period to post treatment while no improvement was observed for the ACT or the asthma control test, the asthma quality of life questionnaire or spirometry test. However, the usage of inhalers were cut down by half and remained stable. Uh, the chest wall excursion and range of motion tests trended toward improvement, but were only st statistically significant with a p-value of 0 0.05 for the arm raise in the frontal plane. Now overall physical fitness. In a 2000 in 2000, a study was conducted on 757 children who were not experienced symptoms of asthma as they were followed for the next 10 and a half years. The purpose of the study was to see if these kids would uh, grow up to have asthma if they did or did not partake in physical fitness. Uh, the study showed that physical fitness in children is weakly correlated with the development of asthma during adolescence and that a child who participates in physical fitness at a young age is l actually less likely to develop asthma. Moving on to fitness assessment recommendations for asthmatics. So now we're going to talk about the physical, the fitness assessment recommendations per, that I would perform in order. So first we have anthropometric measurements, which would include body mass index, waist to hip ratio, and body composition. Next, we move on to the flexible, the flexibility testing, which would be the sit and reach test and the back scratch test, and then on to agility testing which I would have them do the t-test. Then I would have them perform the, mas the maximum muscular strength test would be a 1RM of the bench press and the leg press, a local muscular endurance test which would be the partial curl up test, and the cardiovascular endurance test which would be the, the three minute step test. Um, also, a useful tip would be breathing through your nose because it allows for the air to be filtered before going into your lungs, blocking allergens and other triggers that may cause a reaction. Exercise recommendations. Exercise recommendations do's. Do start at your own pace. Do set a SMART goal. Do exercise regularly to lose excess weight to help manage your asthma. Do consult your physician before beginning. Do have your quick relief medication on standby in case it is needed. Do know your triggers. Do make your condition known. Do pay attention to your symptoms. Do create an asthma action plan and find a workout buddy and ask them to become familiar with this plan. That way, in case something happens, then boom, you got somebody to go to. Now, exercise recommendations for sports. So swimming is considered an endurance sport, but people who have asthma are more likely to tolerate it better than they would a traditional endurance sport such as soccer, basketball, or cross-country skiing for the reason that this is because you're usually performing it by breathing in warm, moist air instead of, you know, all the dry air. So any sport that involves intermittent periods of rest and exertion are best for people with symptoms of asthma. 
So this would include volleyball, gymnastics, baseball, wrestling, and softball. Exercise guidelines. So frequency, three to five sessions per week for aerobic activity and two to three per week for resistance training. Intensity, 40 to 60% of heart rate reserve for anaerobic activity and moderate intensity for resistance training. Mode, when performing aerobic activities, uh, use more large muscle mass activities and not really specific for resistance training. While the duration for aerobic training is 20 to 60 minutes of continuous activity, repetitions for would be 6 to 12 reps for resistance training with 2 to 4 sets for resistance training. Next we have exercise modifications cautions and contraindications. Exercise modifications. So asthmatics are normal people uh, and exercise can be modified for a healthy person just as they can for an asthmatic. It would just depend on the severity of their symptoms. Um, when it comes to environmental factors, instead of performing outside exercises, uh, perform more inside to stay out of the weather and stay away from like the air pollution and you know allergens that may cause their symptoms to flare up. If the person with asthma is having symptoms, then the uh, excuse me, if the person with asthma is having symptoms during exercise due to the intensity they should lower their intensity until they no longer have these symptoms exercise precautions consult with a physician before starting exercise have medication on your person in case you begin to feel the symptoms only exercise until you are slightly out of breath and can still hold a conversation always warm up and cool down no matter who you are during any exercise, if you begin to feel breathless or pain, stop immediately. Contraindications. Do not exercise if you have a cold or any other respiratory infection as this can intensify symptoms. Avoid exercising in cold, dry areas. Avoid high-intensity exercises for long durations. Don't ignore your symptoms as they may lead to more serious symptoms and or even death. Exercising in high polluting areas can increase the frequency and intensity of your symptoms. And don't put off going to the doctor only when you are having symptoms. Go before, that way it's easier to manage your condition. Next is the exercise program. So first would be the warm up. Uh, I would have my client static stretch with a 30 second hold for seated hamstring stretch, kneeling quad stretch, child's pose, and overhead tricep stretch. Then I would move on to a more active warm up uh, with 20 air squats, 15 jumping jacks, 10 push ups, and 5 burpees. So this program is more of a full body program as two to three times per week. Uh, you can't really get a good split of anything else within that time frame. So we would just go based off the guidelines. Um, and have a machine squat, lying leg curls, machine shoulder press, dumbbell upright row, a machine row, a lat pull down, machine chest press, and pec deck flies. Depending on how well they adapt to uh, physical fitness would depend on the sets, but for in generality, I have two sets. You would normally go two to four sets with six to 12 repetitions. Here I have 10 to 12 to focus more on hypotrophy with an intensity of 60 to 80% of the one rep max. And the cool down. Static stretching for 30 seconds hold for the same uh, stretches that we done beforehand 
but also with a five minute walk or low intensity row to kind of get their body, you know, dwindling down. And in conclusion, all in all, asthma and exercise induced bronchospasm is a serious condition that should not be taken lightly. If you experience asthma symptoms, See your doctor right away to learn how to manage your symptoms through life and during exercise. Exercise is not bad for asthmatics and is actually beneficial and can help relieve the frequency of symptom flare-ups. If training a client who is asthmatic, be sure that both of you have a plan and understand what to do if symptoms occur. Follow the guidelines to build a program that is specific to their needs and abilities. And here are my references, two pages worth, and I'm not quite sure why they are blue. Um, I've tried to fix it, but I'm having no luck. And I hope you've enjoyed my slideshow. Thank you. Bye-bye.